I was asked by one of my subscribers, do I think that the Tupac situation in Las Vegas was a setup? I don't. I think it was a crime of opportunity. Let me tell you why. Let's get into some of this straight game. It's not what you dealt with, but how you play it. Mm. I remember they used to laugh at a brother. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. It's your boy Delray Richardson, Platinum Artist, Platinum Songwriter, Straight Game TV. I thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Do me a favor. I hit the thumbs up button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And like I always say, if you want to be one of the first people notified when I drop some of the straight game, please do me a favor. And uh, click on what appears to be that little bell notification uh, right below this video. I'm going to get right into it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a lot of people uh, that come to me all the time. And uh, they ask me, do you think that Tupac was set up in Las Vegas? And I understand what most people think, like, you know, this elaborate setup. Some people believe it's the government. Some people believe it's, you know, various individuals. Um, some people even believe it was Suge Knight at one time. But if you really take a step back, you know, when, when, when you know, this narrative started to run on the Internet a while back, you know, you had people actually saying that Suge Knight actually set Tupac up. And, and when you look at that and you say, okay, the obvious question is, why would Suge Knight be sitting in the car with Tupac and have somebody shoot across him? You know, you have a lot of people talking about, oh, it was an expert shooter. It was this. It was that. It was all of these things, right? None of those things are true. The person who had the motive for the crime was Orlando Anderson. The person who sees the opportunity for the crime was Orlando Anderson. And so when you sit back and you realize what's been going on for all of these years, you're going to say to yourself like, hey, what, you know, why did we believe all of these stories and things that, you know, people were talking about? And the reason why is, is because Tupac was such a, um, big figure he was just real it was just everything about him he lived the real life he was really who he really was and we have yet to see that duplicated and sometimes we just didn't want to let go you know Tupac still alive and all of those things so now the mythical or the yeah I would say the mythical figure status of Suge Knight before everybody knew who he was you know all of the stories they had heard and you know, the Vanilla Ice thing and all of those things, you know, it was like Suge was the big bad boogeyman. And, you know, for some reason, shape or form, you know, he would want Tupac harmed because Tupac was going to leave death row. You know what I mean? And when, you know, you come to understand the truth of the matter is, and I showed you guys, Tupac was never signed to death row. It was all a big corporate business move to get Tupac out of jail, to have him over there, you know, masquerading under death row so that they can make more money. That's basically what it was. And so when Tupac gets, you know, shot in Vegas, everybody's like, you know, Suge did it. And, and, and now you know that that's simply not true. That's simply not true. Um, you had all these other um, stories about people saying, you know, who they thought had, you know, um, you know, shot Tupac. Then it was, you know, uh, it was the it was the government. You know, you know. You have Suge coming out as a recent saying. You know, there was just two people in the car. You know, and that that only just um, confuses everybody. You know, Suge making a statement saying that you know Tupac, you know, is still alive. You know, um, that statement also. But like I said. 
if if you think that it was a setup, I don't like to tell people what to think. You can think what you want. But the situation involving Tupac with Shakur, if you look at, you know, most of the facts and the things that we come to understand, it was basically a crime of opportunity. It was a crime of opportunity. And it was basically surrounded by all of these other events. Um, some of it actually marketing, you know, some of it actually marketing. Because um, when we come to find out like that Tupac knew that Biggie had came to the hospital, um, which was told to me by his father when I did the interview on Art of Dialogue, it tells me a lot of things that Tupac knew about from that perspective. And, you know, when he got out of jail, it was it was on and popping um, from the perspective of, you know, let's use this to sell records. Tupac said as much on um, the last interview, that one of the last interviews that he did with MTV when him and Snoop was sitting next to each other, you know, he was like, we just trying to sell records, you know what I mean? And so, and, 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 and the other interview where he said, you know, it's not like we're going to attack Biggie every time he see him, you know, sometimes I see him, I might not be on it like that. That let me know right there that, you know, it was part, it was partly, you know, marketing and, and, you know, keeping the buzz going. It's no different than what goes on now, but you know, like, you know, it was just on a whole nother level because there was some real feelings behind it. There was some real relationships behind it and and some what was thought to be real betrayal behind it, you know? And so all of those things, that, that powder keg of, of, of what happened and, and how it happened and, you know, um, the Vibe interview, you know, Puffy and them, when they did the Vibe interview and, um, you know, hit them up, you know, um, Tupac messing with Faith and all of these things were like that powder keg mix of of what it was and and like I said I would think that you know Tupac what he said at the end to hit him up talking about the babies and you know um, and you know like I said he had a right to feel the way he he felt and like I said you know when you saying stuff like that you know for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction that you're not really in charge of or in, in control of, if you will. And so, you know, um, Puffy, you know, him coming out to L.A., kind of being a little shook, you know what I mean? Rightfully so, you know what I mean? Um, Suge, Suge was was the powerhouse, you know? Suge and them was, they was moving crazy records, you know? I think they did, like, it was four releases that they released that did, like, over a million copies, and that had never been done before, like, by any record label, you know what I mean? Where you drop four projects and all of them go platinum or double platinum or more, you know? So the, the, the power shift at that time. And so, you know, if you were back there and you were watching it in real time, you could understand like, okay, cool. So now, you know, Puffy wants to come to LA, like Keefe D said, and some of the things that he said, you know, um, Keefe said, Puffy asked him, you know, is it is it cool to come out there? And, and Keefe D was like, yeah, you know, because, you know, Keefe D and where he was from, you know, those guys were, 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 were real real dudes too, you know what I mean? And they handled their business accordingly, just like the guys that Suge was rolling with. They handled their business accordingly. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, you know, um, Tupac said in the interview um, when he was at his condo on Wilshire, you know what I mean? Um, I'm the reason why, you know, most of these niggas got gangsters on their payroll now. He was talking about Puffy. You see? So, you know, Tupac knew what was going on. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he didn't know what was going on from that perspective. And I'm sure it, it was talked about. You know, if you haven't seen that interview, you know, you should watch it. And um, so, you know, you 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 get in, and you dealing with all of this stuff and the Lakewood Mall and the, and the attempted chain snatching and all of that, right? All of that's a powder keg. So now, all of a sudden, you know, um, you go to Las Vegas, you get to Las Vegas, you know, you know there was no big scheme of, of of what that was. Like I said, and then you deal with with uh, uh, Reggie the Rat Wright Jr., you know, him being fired. See, all of these things, and you, you, if you take all of this into totality, right, you know, um, you know, him removing the security from Tupac because, you know, he felt like, you know, he wasn't um, getting paid 
no more to to um have security on Tupac and and Suge asking him, you know, send more security and, and him not doing it. You know what I mean? You know, all of those things because he wasn't really getting paid. And he said in the interview, um, you know, that I showed you guys in regards to that, talking about he didn't, Reggie the Rat, right, Jr. saying, you know, I didn't need that little $300 a day that I was having, you know, for the security to be on Tupac. You know, and I, 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 you know, I hope he get caught with a gun and he go back to jail, you know, if I was thinking like that, you know. All of those things, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, you're in Vegas. Um, you know, everybody goes to Vegas. You know, Keefy D and them, you know, they in Vegas. You know, uh, Suge them, they, you know, we know they in Vegas. And all of a sudden, you know, they see Orlando Anderson. And whoever it was, like I said, a lot of people say, you know, um, you know, somebody whispered something in, in, in Tupac's ear, right? I don't know who that individual was. I wasn't there. You know what I mean? But they know who they are and, and or not. You know what I mean? But somebody whispered something in Tupac's ear and where they knew who Orlando Anderson was and they told Tupac and Tupac decided to take upon himself and run over there and run up on Orlando Anderson and hit him. Right? And then he got jumped. We seen the tape, right? Okay, now, all of this stuff is brewing and going on. You know, this wasn't the first altercation, from what I understand. And they had an altercation sometime at the Soul Train Music Awards, you know, where a situation where um, all of these guys who knew each other from that perspective, you know, um, knew that, you know, a certain crew was rolling with a certain crew and another crew was rolling with another crew and they and you know what I mean so all of that so this is even before the Vegas thing so you get to Vegas you know it's the perfect opportunity and just so so happens that like I said you know you're dealing with envy jealousy hatred um you know um street stuff all of that combined right now Orlando Anderson has jumped you know these are real dudes who who, who handle their business and, you know, that night, the business got handled. You know, it was the it was a crime of opportunity. And then, you know, you can go into all of the other stuff, you know, uh, Keefe D saying, you know, Zip gave us the gun and, you know, but, you know, basically Keefe D summed it up in one of the interviews he did. He was like, you know, they, they jumped my nephew and, you know, that gave us, you know, the green light to go and do what we had to do, you know? You know, so when a lot of people say, you know, what, you know, they think it was this elaborate setup, if you will, right? Nah, but no elaborate setup. You know, oh, Reggie, Reggie, you know, part, part. No, 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 no. I don't give anybody that much credit. You know, like I said, but in in saying that, Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. was responsible for securing Tupac, and he didn't do that, and for that, and no disobeying should, you know. He was negligent and complicit in that nature in the murder of Tupac Shakur, you know? Um, and, and the reason why I say that, the fact of the matter is, um, we would have have to, to predicted what Tupac was going to do for, for, in order for that to be that, that elaborate setup, if you will. We would have had to predict that, you know, you know that he was going to run over there and, you know, um, and start hitting Orlando Anderson after something was whispered into his ear. I don't think nobody could predict that from that perspective, but that's what happened. And so for every, like I said, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so that's the reason why I say that it wasn't a setup because you couldn't predict that one move. You also couldn't predict whether, you know, Keith E. D. Nim was going to find a uh, run into Shugnam in Las Vegas, right? Or back in L.A. But the opportunity presented itself where Tupac and him was riding down uh, a flamingo. And, you know, from what Keith D said, he saw Tupac was hanging out the window, you know, talking to some girls or whatever, whatever. You know, there lies the opportunity again, just like Orlando Anderson was hanging out at the MGM Grand. And whoever whispered in Tupac's ear saw an opportunity. Right. So all of that goes into the to the uh, the narrative and the fact that the matter is it, it was a crime of opportunity it was a crime of opportunity and you know 
a uh, response to a reaction. You know, it was a response to a reaction. And the response to the reaction of Tupac running over there, hitting Orlando Anderson, and him getting jumped, and the reaction to that was, I mean, should I say the response to that was, to that reaction was, you know, Tupac got shot that night. And so, like I said, you know, I understand you're going to, you know, most people are going to think what they're going to think. They're going to say like, you know, oh, man, I believe it was this. I believe it was that, you know. Nah, nah, you got to. There's a lot of things that have to, to go into that. And, and it would have been, you know, Suge being in the car, you know, all of that. And knowing that he was going to be riding in the car with Tupac and um, just so many other things that 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 had to to be, you know, if for it to be a setup, it, it just, yeah, it just, it would have happened a different way than that. And like I said, if you understand the mathematics of the situation, you can take a step back and not get into your feelings, but just get into the facts of, of, of what we know, you know. And now, you know, you have Keefe D indicted uh, uh, in, involving the murder of Tupac Shakur, you know. Um, and like I said, for whatever reason that Keefe D felt like he should keep speaking out, you know, these are the this is the consequence behind that. And so everybody's waiting and seeing. But for me, when they when people ask me, do I think, oh, it was a setup? Was it this elaborate setup? No, I don't think that. I think it was a crime of opportunity. It was a a, a response based on a reaction. Your boy Delray, straight gang.